Hey guys, just one heads up here. Um, I was going through some of the editing on this video that you're watching right now, and as it turns out that Stumpy had stopped at six minutes and was like literally cooking, like smoking on fire hot. So we lost a little bit of the, uh, we, all, we lost all of Stumpy's video. It's here, but apparently it won't play back because the file is corrupt. So I don't think it's going to affect the overall integrity of the video because you actually will get real good views from the primary camera. Uh, but if you have any questions of anything that we missed when I'm showing it to Stumpy, who clearly decided to overheat, let me know and we'll, we'll square those away one at a time. Here we go. Hey folks, John with Alternate Arms, your friend in less than lethal self-defense. All right guys, so as it turns out, our friends over at Salt Supply are actually kind of embedded with a few other things that you're gonna get a kick out of. Here we go. Now guys, during my visit at SHOT Show, you'll recall that I told you that we w actually went up and had a, a kind of a, a little after SHOT Show meeting with uh, the CEO of Salt Supply and the CEO of uh, Mace, and I also met a couple other people. Um, as it turns out, Mace and Salt Supply are kind of all over the place. So they have different partners and different branches and fingers and tips and all kinds of places. Well, one of the people that I met over at the, uh, uh, in this little conference was a guy named Marty. Turns out he sent me something from a place called Millspec Plastics that I want you guys to check out. So check these out. I am not, I do not want to be tested or have any of these placed on me. I'm just going to say that now, all right? So these are what are called Cobra Cuffs. Now, I am pretty sure if we have any of our law enforcement guys out there, you've seen these. These are those incredibly ultra-dense zip-tie handcuffs. One use, throw them on, zip them up, and they're locked. They're done. They're not getting out. I, I, do, okay, in all honesty, you'll notice the package looks as if it might be missing one. That's because when these came in, uh, my wife, who you guys have seen on the Wife Shoot videos, um, decided that she wanted to try one of these out and put them on me to see if they would actually hold. She couldn't believe zip types could be that tough. Dude, these things are like steel. Now, I want to take these out of here and I want to show you. Now, they sent me a trainer. Now, the big difference between the trainer and the other versions is there's a lock that when you pull the zip, locks these in place like a standard zip tie. The trainer doesn't have that. Now, if you go into any of the other ones, and yes, they have multiple colors, by the way, you'll notice the black one is the one that we used. Uh, don't ask me why, but as you can see with the trainers, you actually have the little zipping mechanism right here to lock it in place. So once you pull it and push those in, it's sort of like the advanced lock on uh, handcuffs. So when they put on handcuffs, they'll push in that button to keep them from going any smaller. Same deal with the zip tie. Once you push that in, it locks it into place. But there is no backing it out once those are in. The game is over. And as such, inside all of the packages, they actually include the cutter to cut the zip ties off. There's no taking it off. You cut it, literally, put your finger in a hole, put on the zip tie, and cut it to get the thing open. And to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about, guys, let me show you on the trainer real quick. Now... A lot of you guys have probably seen handcuffs like this, but snap them open just like that. Hand goes in, correct? So you got your hands in there, you grab the back, you pull. That's all there is to it. And that then locks them in place. At that point, you would push the back in order to secure this. These are very, very, very cool. Um, but once again, they're... Okay, to kind of give you an idea of how dense those are, guys, and I hope it's kind of coming across, you can see how thick that plastic is. It is extremely thick. It's not your cable tie zip tie, that's for sure. All right, now, this one being a trainer, as you can see, can be pulled back through. However, when you use the real one, and I'm going to show you guys this, we're going to burn one so I can kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about. We're going to snap them out into place. Bam, bam. All right, so at this point, hands go in. Zip. Now listen. You hear that, guys? There is no getting that apart ever once you're into these things. You're not going to be breaking them. Now, once you've got it zipped, you push these in, and that will lock the zips in place. Now, keeping in mind, once these are pushed in, ain't no pulling them out again. 
So that's all there is to it. They are locked in place. Once again, to get them open, you literally have to put this on and cut the cuff. And, and guys, that's not an easy feat. I mean, you have to hit just the right angle. See that? And it will cut right through the cuff, just like that. That's the only way to get them off. So I'm going to throw links to these guys down in the description. You wouldn't believe me if I told you how cheap these are, but it's probably a good thing to keep you never know when you're going to need it. Seriously. I know it sounds like a weird thing, but at the end of the day, it might be something that you would need. So keep one in your car, keep them at your house. I could actually think of a couple of uses for this. Stop it. You know who you are. Stop it. But there are a couple other uses. These would come in really handy. And once again, they're very inexpensive. So I want to thank him for setting these out here for Millspec. I'll have all of the links down there to their website so you guys can pick these up or at least check them out. They also have a couple other really interesting things on their website. Just saying. Just saying. All right. So in our week-long thing of getting cool stuff, I got a couple packages from Salt Supply. Now, a lot of you guys, and I do mean a lot, have been sending me different emails about what optics can we use on this or what lasers and what lights can we actually use on this as it turns out salt supply has a recommended version for specifically this salt launcher and it's the laser max spartan now i'm going to show this over here to stumpy um, this thing and there's something else cool about it too we'll get to that in a second let's go ahead what i want to do is i want to pull this out and i want to mount this to the salt supply so we can actually see what it looks like. Man, I love the salt supply. Hey, listen, if you guys haven't had a chance to get out and get behind one of these things, go get behind one of these things. It is a, an amazing experience. This weekend, we were actually out at a trade show and I set up a, a, a shooting area where people could go out and shoot these at the trade show. Man, you ought to see people's eyes go from this to this when they fired it the first time. It was amazing. So yeah, don't worry. Next one, we'll have video. They get a little bit cranky when you film, as it turns out, at a uh, at a gun show. Hmm. Yeah. Can't imagine why, right? But anyway, I am working on something with that too. So hopefully, we'll be able to do some live broadcasts from the gun shows in the near future. I'm working on it. So, all right, let's crack this thing open and see what we get in the box. Oh, it's one of those that once you open it, it's open forever. All right. And it looks like a standard Picatinny rail which by the way, leads us to something else. Standard Picatinny rail mount. And as you can see, it's got the lever action on and off switches for both the light and the laser that are built into this. So let me go, oh, and it runs off of a AAA battery. All right, this I kind of like. I've had a lot of generic and universal lasers for all of these different launchers that will run on watch batteries. And you know what I'm talking about, guys, those little button cell batteries. I usually keep a, a whole box of those things here. For people, because if you leave it on for five minutes, your battery drains out and you got to go find more button cell batteries. So I kind of like the concept of running on a AAA. So let's go ahead. I'm going to get this in here and we're going to take a look at the mounting situation, which by the way, looks even easier than the, uh, the site itself. Hang on. I'm going to put the battery in. Be right back. All right, guys. So one thing I want to show you here while we're doing this. Now, once you've actually got the laser, uh, one thing that's kind of neat about this is how you actually put the battery into it. And it took me a sec to figure this one out. So you've got your Allen key. Once you loosen this, which is normally to loosen the Picatinny rail to put it on, it will open up like a little door. Check this out. And that is where the battery goes on top of being the one that tightens it down onto the launcher. Actually, I find that kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to put the battery in and we're gonna close it down. Now we're going to mount this to our launcher and I'm gonna mount this in a kind of a, a rear mounting position. Now, guys, what I wanna show you is when you mount this, you've got a little black protrusion right there and I'm hoping that this will pick it up, okay? It's a little protrusion right there that sticks up. That little protrusion goes into the slots on the Picatinny rail. So you can mount it as far back as you want to as long as you have one of those protrusions to work with. Right about there would be good. Yeah, that should be good. And let's go ahead and I'm going to secure the screw. There we go. Hopefully you guys are getting a view of this. I'm trying to keep it in the, keep it in view for you. There we go. Tightening that down and dropping the Allen key. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. So now, as you can see, we are now mounted onto the launcher. I'm going to take off that silly 
sticker because it's driving me crazy. Hold on a second here. There we go. Now, as you can see, Spartan on one side, Laser Max on the other side. All right, now, one thing I want to show you about this that I really like about this particular laser, and I didn't know anything about this until I saw it. Guys, they're not inexpensive, but they're also not hyper expensive. They're actually, for what you're getting, it's pretty amazing. You'll notice that you've got the paddle controls on both sides of the laser, making this ambidextrous. And we're not dealing with a slide. Like some lasers will have a slide that will go all the way across for on and off. This is simple push on, simple push off. So top one, simple push on is the laser, as you guys can see. And as you can see, guys, it is a very, very bright laser. All right. Once again, push one more time, turns it off. The bottom one showing you here is the light. Simple push on, simple push off. Get that? Simple push on, simple push off. So one click, laser, one click, light, one click, one click, both. All right, pretty cool, right? So you have everything on one button at the edge of your finger. Now here's the kicker to this laser. Not only does it fit the salt supply, this is a universal laser, which means that it will actually fit all of the T4E line also. You guys know what I'm talking about, so your Glocks and Walthers and all that kind of stuff. It'll also fit all the Umarex line. Anything that's got a Picatinny rail down there, it's gonna fit and work with because it is a universal mounting system. Really, really cool. Now, the thing I love about this, guys, is because the salt supply generally, what I was finding is 25 to 30 feet is pretty accurate. I mean, you're talking, it does have some rise. So you're, you're usually about at 30 feet, about six inch of rise because you've got a lot of power coming out of this. Well, guess what compensates for that? You can't adjust your sights, but you can definitely put a laser on. And since there's no recoil, you're not going to be constantly recalibrating your laser, which is really cool too. Now, speaking of calibration, just to let you know, if you look on the side here, you've got left and right there. And on the bottom, you've got your up and down right there. So you go out, you fire your first round, you see where you're hitting, and then you adjust your laser, fire again, see where you're hitting, adjust your laser, zero it in just like that. Pretty cool, right? Now, that was one of the neat things. I love the fact, look, guys, t okay, if you could look at that and tell me that doesn't look cool, seriously. I mean, seriously, look, come on. And I can see this going, the cool thing is since it's black, I can see it going on the white one. I can see it going on the yellow one. It'll work on the gray one. It's going to look just as cool on any of them because it's just as cool. Yeah. Now, the next thing they sent me. Now, this box came in, I want to say around the middle of last week, and I have been aching to get into this because I know what this is. And uh, I've been expecting it. They were out of stock for the longest time. One of the questions that I get also very often are from our law enforcement friends out there and people that want to EDC this launcher. What holster do I use? Now, a lot of you guys have seen the standard leather holster that I use, and it works perfectly with this launcher without any problem at all. But this is supposed to be, aha, this is the Kydex holster. Oh, there it is, shipped to me, right-hand holster. So they have right-hand and left-hand holsters. Oh, very nice, guys. Uh-oh, look what I see. That is a Kydex holster. It has got a paddle for underneath, and that's actually kind of flexible. I like that. And as you can see, it's got the cutout for, wait for it, the laser. Should we do this together, guys? It's got some adjustment for tension, too, so I'm not sure uh, where we're going to be right out of the box. Are you guys ready? Let's check this out. In. Look at that. Look at that, guys. That is exactly what you want out of a holster. You know what? I'm going to tighten that up a tad. Hang on a second here. I like um, a little bit of grip on the, uh, the launcher when you pull it out because I don't like any sliding and I certainly don't if you're running or moving quickly. I don't want it bouncing up and down. Much better. A little tighter than that. And that's all you do right there, guys. Just adjust that screw to adjust that. Ten oh, now we're talking. Look at that. Now, question, how high does it mount on your belt? Hmm. I'm going to paddle mount this all the way into my waistline, guys. All right? And that's where it mounts. Look at that. Let me get, get, get stumpy, get a view of that. Check that out. Now, don't look at my, my flat stomach there. Check it out. I love the mounting position of that holster. That is pretty cool. Now, since it's high, and I do typically wear pretty high on my holsters. A lot of you guys do, too. 
it gives you a perfect draw position. And once again, where's my hand? See where my hand is? So if you're training with a launcher that has got a quick pierce on the bottom, you need to muscle memory train yourself. You'll notice how I went right to that because I'm used to that from the Umarex. So if you're coming to here, that's it. That's all there is to it. You, so when you draw your launcher and you're ready to go, you're sliding right into position. Get it? And then click, 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 click. Awesome, right? Just like that. Guys, that holster is awesome. That is really awesome. I'm going to adjust that tension even a little bit tighter. I like it a little. I mean, that's good, but I like it a little bit tighter. It's really personal preference. But you can see how great that looks and works. Um, as usual, I will have links to these holsters, to this laser, and everything else. I will also tell you that I am fully intending on carrying all of this in my shop for you guys. Um, Remember what we said about by the end of the year, I want it to be kind of the one-stop shop for all of this for you guys. This is another step in that direction for you. And it's what I want to do. So, yeah. All right, guys, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me go ahead. Oh, look, I forgot to put one extra screw into that laser. I was wondering why I was sitting here holding the screw. Now I know why. There we go. All right. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and clear up this desk a little bit. And I've got some uh, interesting announcements for you that you're going to want to hear. So we'll be right back with you. Here we go. What do you think, guys? Pretty slick, right? What I did is, so I've got that black one in here, and this is the one that Salt Supply had originally sent me. Look, laser, light. I like this. I'm going to get used to this because I like the feel of it and uh, wear this for a few days. I tell you, they are getting better every single time we get something from them. It is what it is, right? They're great. It's a great company. All right. Now, I have a couple of announcements for you. For those of you who have waited this long, I just got in a shipment of HDP-50s, um, which I have been trying to get forever. You guys know they're almost impossible to get everywhere right now. Uh, I do have six of them in stock. Uh, I'm going to mod out three right off the bat. So if you guys want those, shoot me an email. You know the drill. I got down there in my description. Um, and I can get you out one of those. Uh, also... You'll like this. The HDP50 Series 2 and the TR50 Series 2 are supposed to be coming in within the next two weeks. When they do, I will have one in here for the channel, and then I'll have a whole bunch of them for you guys also. I have verified again that all internals on the new TR50 version 2 and the uh, uh, HDP50 version 2 are identical. All changes are cosmetic on the outside, and of course, the pressure release punch cap on the bottom. That's the only differences between them. Now, one more for you. And this is for those of you who had the guts to stay to the end. I have got the new TR50 Torpedo Revolver upgraded valve in stock. They just came in. So hopefully, um, I'm thinking either Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm going to get a video shot to upgrade the Torpedo Revolver and take it up to what it's supposed to be doing. I cannot wait. I'm glad they finally got them, um, and we have it now. So stay tuned for that one. Have a great week, guys. Be safe out there, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.